Uh, we said this about risk factors for ESPL recent antimicrobial therapy. And before, if you say for 20 or 30 years, when we didn't have so high resistant rates, we often uh, talked about antibiotic therapy, a risk for the society to use antibiotics when not needed. Of course, there is the same mechanism, selection of resistant bacteria in the intestinal flora, easier for new uh, resistant uh, bacteria to colonize, and spread of this resistant bacteria in hospitals and maybe in community. But now, with higher rates of resistance, it's also an individual risk <laughs> and a risk for the surrounding of the patient, the family. If the individual have an infection the next month, yes, after being colonized with a resistant uh, bacteria, it is not so easily treated. So it's a, you can call it a paradigm shift. And so it's easier to talk with the patients of, in some cases, to abstain, avoid antibiotics, if not necessary. And uh, the consequences of antibiotic resistance, not only in the treatment with antibiotic, but we use a lot of prophylaxis um, of antibiotic in hospital. Um, maybe if we have um, admitted patients, um, of the admitted patient, maybe 40% are uh, on antibiotics. 10% are used to prophylaxis. Prophylaxis for a lot of surgery and for also medical prophylaxis and cancer chemotherapy. And you, I don't think you can see anything about that, but, but this is a, a risk reduction. If you use antibiotic as a prophylaxis, you will uh, diminish the risk of getting a post-operative infection. It's common in some sort of surgery. For example, here is colorectal surgery. It's common with post-operative infection, and you must use antibiotics. But if not this antibiotics working because of resistant, you can say if you have a 30% decrease in efficacy because of resistant, you will have a lot of more infections. And this is from the U.S., and it's not so interesting, the exact figures. But also in these areas, we will have consequences of uh, increased antibiotic resistance. And also, you know this uh, now, Staphylococcus is a common bacteria causing uh, skin infections. You all have Staphylococcus on your skin, and then could be uh, resistant, and then we call them MRSA, methicillin resistant stuff aureus. This is the sensitive counterpart, methicillin sensitive. And this is a, a common resistant bacteria, but not causing urinary tract infection as a spell, mostly skin and uh, soft tissue infection. And you have the same theme, the north south gradient, also with this uh, resistant bacteria. And you, you, you can see this picture, or is too light. Well, of course, it's uh, an infection, it's a red uh, about, and here is some, uh, we call it pus uh, secretion, and it's a very thick um, uh, secretion. I can tell because of the appearance which bacteria, but you can't. But this is uh, not streptococca, this is staphylococca, I don't know. But I don't, I don't know by the appearance, is this a resistant infection? Or, I, I can't say. We need culture. You talked about cultures, yes. So, this is patients in my hospital in Schöfter. I will act in one way. But if this is a patient in Romania, in Bucharest, of course they will act in another way because of a much higher rate of resistance. You understand? So you must know your uh, resistant rates. So risk of resistant setting, 
which part of the world, country, region, city? Is it in a hospital or primary care and in the hospital department, the intensive care unit is the worst? You should always uh, know if you have uh, the correct data. This is methicillin resistant Staph aureus. And you see here uh, numbers for 2007 to 2013. And here, England, France, and Spain have problem, but they have done a lot. They have done a lot on what we call stewardship to use antibiotics correctly in hospitals. And they have done a lot about infection uh, prevention control in hospitals. And you see, it's much more better. But often in media, you, you get the wrong impression that Oh, we don't, we can't do anything about the resistance. Right? You can do, you can do a lot. So you must have um, updated uh, data. But in Romania, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, there is no improvement. So um, yeah, this patient with Staphylococcus aureus. And you have to culture it, and in this case, it was a resistant staphylococci. What I talked about, complicated versus not uncomplicated uh, infection. Not every skin infection is so complicated. Maybe it's enough to use, enough to use a knife to, to drain it, or do you have to use uh, drainage and antibiotics? Of course, it's better just to use the knife, not to give more antibiotics and you will have a more resistant and it will be an evil circus. So this study using this antibiotic for uncomplicated skin abscesses. Now what it says is that cure of abscess, it's better with antibiotics plus the knife, 93%, and with only the knife, 86%. But the important thing is that nearly 90% are cured just by the knife. They don't need antibiotic. So in times of escalating antibiotic resistance, we must use more alternative or additional treatments than antibiotics. Yeah. <laughs> In the medieval times, when they didn't know anything about bacteria, they called this secretion pus bonum et laudibile because it was easy to drainage in opposite to pus from streptococci. They did know that aura at that time. So here you have the sensitive streptococci, they are resistant, and we have problems with this, but we have disaster with the resistant. And this is a very old study from 1941. Then, at that time, not much many uh, patients did get any uh, penicillin antibiotic whatsoever. And they studied 122 cases with Staphylococca in the blood, ordinary Staphylococca sensitive, and 82% died. This was the pre-antibiotic era. And maybe with resistant, we are slow motion back to this pre-antibiotic era with so high mortality rates. Now we say we have mortality rates about 10 to 15 percent if you have staphylococcus aureus in the blood. Yeah. So patient's perspective of resistant staphylococci, of course, increased morbidity, mortality, length of stay, length of therapy. And we have to use second-line antibiotics, often with more side effects. And another uh, effect is the trauma. Even if they don't have an infection, but they are a carrier of a resistant uh, bacteria. So we give them a notification card, and this card they should show in contact with dentistry or healthcare. But some patients don't do because they don't like to be a carrier of resistant um, bacteria. And this has been studied in several uh, 
articles this stigmatizing effect of being a carrier and more and more people are carriers nowadays of resistant mm -hmm. bacteria. I just will point out when you see figures like this, here are both carriers and infected people and this is true for this also. So here in the room there are some carriers of staphylococci, I can't tell which of you, but in a population 20-30% are carriers of staphylococci, uh, resistant or sensitive I can't say, but here in Sweden you are mostly sensitive and you are carrier in the nose, anterior nares of the nose, here uh, it's a good condition for staphylococci and uh, we can uh, treat, we do treat with local ointment and nose to eradicate if you are a carrier. For example, if you're working in a hospital, maybe we don't want you to carry, especially if you have MRSA. We don't treat MSSA. If you're a carrier of sensitive stuff, we don't, we don't treat, of course not.